Hey guys, welcome back. Well, for you guys who have the William Optics Red Cat 51, you know how sensitive the manual focus is with this helical focuser. And I finally just got fed up with it and decided to go ahead and buy the ZWO autofocus motor. And now I just need a way to attach it to the helical focuser so that I can start doing some unattended automatic focusing and not have to deal with this helical focuser on the Red Cat. Let me show you what I found out. The first one I bought is from Smart Components. I got it off of Etsy.com. It's a nice design. It has a little bracket here that slips over the barrel. You take off the dew shield, and there's a split ring here. So you just splay it out just enough to slip it over the helical focuser and up against the stop where this edge here comes to a stop against the edge of the red cat. And then you use this thumb screw here to tighten this ring back together again and generate enough friction so that it doesn't turn. And that's easy enough to do, and it seems to work out pretty well. The autofocuser, of course, fits in here with the two holes that you would normally use to mount it to the autofocus bracket that comes with the autofocuser. Instead, you mount it in here. These two thumb screws attach to these dovetail elements here so that you could put in a William Optics guide scope or a ZWO guide scope, and you'll be good to go on that front. And then, of course, this sprocket here goes on the end of the ZWO autofocuser and then finally you've got this belt that wraps around the sprocket here and around the helical focuser of the telescope and you use this part here as a tensioner to increase or decrease tension on the belt now it looks like the design of this part here has changed since they took this picture because mine looks a bit different from that now I did give this one a try but in the process I decided what the heck I'm going to go ahead and order a different autofocus mount and this one I got from Aegina Astro from Pro Astro Gear. Again, it's 3D printed plastic parts. Use these two screws to attach it to the Red Cat. These two screw holes up here can be used to attach, say, a, a dovetail interface that I'll show you in a minute. And then this side over here is used to attach the ASI Air Pro if that's what you have. I don't have that. And then instead of the belt drive, you've got a sprocket gear that goes on to the end of the autofocuser. And then you have this ring gear of which half of it 180 degrees of it has gear teeth that mesh up with the sprocket now this piece over here doesn't have gear teeth but let's face it during a given autofocus run you're just going to be using a few of the gear teeth on this ring gear anyway there isn't that much motion because of the sensitivity of the helical focuser on the red cap there are two basic design approaches out there, a belt drive and a gear drive. My engineering sensibilities tell me to go with the gear drive rather than the belt drive, but both of these should work, and I think many of you are using a belt drive quite successfully. You can see the Smart Components bracket here. I've got it installed on the Red Cat. All I need to do is just mount this focuser up against the face of this bracket here, and I'd be good to go. However, what I found is that there is this raised lip here that has a diameter of about 22 to 23 uh, millimeters, an outer diameter of about 22 to 23 millimeters. And unfortunately, with the latest version of the ZWO focuser, the recess, the inner diameter of the recess is 19 to 20 millimeters in diameter. So when you try to install the focuser in this part here, you find that this ring is actually bearing outside on this flat surface here and doesn't nestle down inside the recess. It probably does with an older version of the ZWO focuser, but it doesn't with this new redesigned CWO focuser and as a result it doesn't sit flush and now the axis of the shaft is not parallel to the axis of the telescope so that's a bit of a problem. The long-term fix to this problem is to simply grind down with this lip with say a Dremel tool or something. I also emailed Nick at Smart Components. He was heading out the door on a trip so he couldn't quite deal with it at the moment which is fine but one of the things he is certainly willing to do is to change his 3D model so it just doesn't print this lip part and then you could have a perfectly flush fit up with the motor and the face of this bracket here. Now what I did in the short term, rather than grind away this edge here, do something destructive, I found that a US nickel has about the same thickness within a hundredths of a millimeter as the depth or thickness of that lip. So I just taped a nickel onto the back side of the bracket and that gave me a fairly uniform bearing surface around this area here so that when I attach the focus motor to the bracket, the shaft of the focus motor is parallel with the axis of the telescope. I wouldn't use this as a long-term solution, but it is good enough for testing for right now. Now here I have the focus motor attached 
and you can see the belt coming around, engaging with the sprocket. And then here's that tensioner piece here. One of the questions that occurs to you is, where do I place this tensioner? And I found out that if you have the tensioner at 180 degrees from the sprocket, that's the minimum tension. And then as you bring the tensioner back around so that eventually at maximum tension, the belt, as it just leaves the edge of this tension piece, it grazes the edge of the focuser and then engages with the sprocket, that's when you would get maximum tension. And that's probably what you want to aim for. And that's why you see this thing is a little bit offset. Although I do have a little bit of wrap around here, so I could probably get a little more tension out of the placement of this uh, tensioning component here. So the whole idea is you want just enough tension to ensure that you get consistent rotation of the helical focuser on the red cap, but you don't want to over tension it. It's designed to deliver torque and it's not meant to have a significant side load acting on the side of the shaft. It doesn't mean you're going to break it, but it is something that occurs to me that I don't want to pull too tightly to the side of this for fear of damaging something inside the focus motor since it wasn't really designed for that. With my installation here, I had enough tension to go ahead and give it a, a try outside. And here's what I found. This is going to be greatly sped up here. I have the telescope focused with the Batonoff mask. I did that manually, then engaged the belt and the tensioner and now I'm going to go out and move the focuser out a significant amount as I would in an autofocus and that's good news the belt drive did move the focuser so that's good now I'm going to try to bring adjust the focus position so that I can try to bring it back into focus again now I made a little bit of a change there and it didn't seem to work I'm going to make an even smaller change just to get to an even number on the focuser position so I'm not expecting a big change I didn't see much there now I'm making a fairly large change, a 50 step change, which is pretty large, and I should see some movement, and I'm really not seeing any movement. So now I'm going to try it again with another big step, and I'm not seeing a movement. So this kind of was the consistent thing. I would make these big changes, and I wouldn't see the movement. I moved it the focuser out but I couldn't move it back in to focus and I finally gave up and went back to manual focus for the rest of the night. By then the clouds were coming in and so was my Pro Astro Gear Black Cat focuser mount so I decided to stand down a bit and replace the Smart Components auto focuser mount with the Pro Astro Gear auto focuser mount and here's what it looks like when it's attached. Now one of the things that I did have to do, I had to rotate the telescope within the mount. The way it was originally installed, this thumb screw for the rotator is directly under the focus motor. In fact, it interferes with it, so this part won't sit flat on the red cat clamp with this knob here. It's not a big deal, I just had to rotate it, but since I was in an imaging project, that meant that I was going to have to compensate by turning the rotator back to put the camera back in the same orientation and of course I did have to take a new set of flats to go with it once I moved the camera and got try to get it back into place with the rotator. Now these slotted holes here are actually quite ingenious. What they do they serve the purpose of, of allowing you to make an adjustment on the amount of engagement of the sprocket which you can't see because it's hidden by this thumb screw here but it allows you to move the focuser back and forth along this line here which in turn produces better engagement deeper engagement of the sprocket with the ring gear or reduces the engagement of the sprocket with the wing ring gear and so that's how you can make sure that you're getting good engagement you're not just getting contact on the tip of the gear teeth which might not be a good idea for plastic parts you kind of want as much contact as you can get without having binding issues and as long as, as you can slide it along this axis here, you can dial that in pretty well. Now, I also had a fit-up problem with the Pro Astro Gear mount. In this case, I wasn't able to slide this part down and get the kind of engagement of the sprocket gear with the ring gear that I wanted because I was getting contact right here with the thumb screw that goes with the Red Cat mount. Now, my Red Cat is the original Red Cat that came out that's since been modified a couple of times. And when they modify it, they also seem to be making some changes to the clamp here. So if you have a more recent version of the Red Cat, you may not have this interference problem. I had a bit of an interference problem, so I just took a Dremel tool to it and carved out the back side of this so that it would give me a little more clearance. And then I did some testing indoors just to convince myself that the gear gearing system was working and I could go back and forth. So let me show you what that looks like.
So here I'm commanding some movements of the ring and one focuser in one direction. You can see it move. And now I'm going to go back the other way. About 100 steps is the steps that I'm taking here. So you can see that it immediately engaged. And so that says the backlash is less than 100 steps. So everything seems to be working pretty well. So at least with some successful testing under my belt indoors, I knew that the ring gear was working and I could move the focuser both ways successfully. I also had a decent estimate of what the backlash is. At least I know that it's less than 100 steps. So then I moved the system outdoors for some imaging that night. You can see I have my ride-along cloud cam attached to one of these L brackets that I spoke of in a recent video. It turns out that that L bracket fits perfectly inside of Vixen base here and I just use these thumb screws to tighten it down and hold it. And you can see that I've got really good engagement here between the teeth and the ring gear after making the adjustments down here that allowed me to slide this part down a bit to get better engagement. You want to leave the ring gear a bit loose so that you can make little adjustments like this uh, as you're shifting this around and then once you get good engagement then go ahead and tighten the screws down a little bit to make sure that you have good friction between the ring gear and the helical focuser of the red cap. So with the confidence of having done some indoor testing first, it was time to try it outside. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Telescope was way out of focus, so I'm making some movements to the focuser, and you can see that it is responding. I moved the focuser in. We're obviously very sped up here. Move the focuser in, take a picture. Clearly, we're, we're having some good uh, success engaging with the helical focuser on the red cat. And it's getting to a point here where I'm pretty sure I can do some actual plate solving and star detection. So I'm going to plate solve, move the bright star, probably Vega, into the center of view. And then I'll bring out the Batonoff mask and we'll zero in on focus at that point. There you go. So Vega is centered. And now I can put on the Batonoff mask and I've got it tuned in. So that looks like I'm a pretty good focus point and I'm going to start an autofocus run at this stage not knowing exactly what the parameters are and it looks like I'm way out of focus here. It doesn't recognize stars with those first two positions but then it jumps up at a very high HFR and then starts to behave as you would expect it to coming down the curve and then going back up the curve on the other side but it's going to go way out of focus on that side too and get blobs that it won't recognize as stars. But that's okay. This is actually very good news. I just need to make an adjustment here on the autofocus step size, make sure there are no clouds in the vicinity, and give it another try and see how it works. Now I know that the HFR I'm coming, I'm heading towards is about 2, so getting an HFR of around 12 is way too much. I need to come down on that uh, by a good bit, maybe by as much as half to reduce the focus range that it is doing during an autofocus run. The key point here is that I'm getting very good results out of the autofocus runs and so that's good news and I'm good to go. So I've been imaging successfully now with the Pro Astro Gear autofocuser mount uh, for about five days now and I've, these are kind of typical results I get. The, the, hy the hyperbolic curve fits are, are perfect. You can see my R squared values are around 0.99. There's 1.98 in there but they are behaving very consistently. The data followed the curves very well. And then another show of consistency is as I plot the temperature that I get with the focuser position, you can see it follows a line as the temperature drops, the focus the focuser moves in at a consistent rate. So I'm getting repeatable and consistent, excellent results with the Pro Astro Gear mount. So I finally caved in, I got fed up dealing with that extremely sensitive helical focuser manually on the Red Cat and decided to start exploring some of the autofocus options that are out there on the marketplace. There are several third-party 3D printed options available over the web and there are some do-it-yourself options out there as well. The basic design revolves either around using a belt drive to engage the helical focuser or having a ring gear and a sprocket to engage the helical focuser. Either one of these options can work. I must say that I do have a bit of a biased preference towards the sprocket gear based design. I tried two options. I tried the Smart Components belt driven system and the Pro Astro Gear sprocket gear system. Both are easy to install. Both cost about 80 US dollars. I did have minor fit up issues. In the case of the Smart Components mount, I believe it's changes that ZWO made to its focuser that led it to be a little 
out of step with how the smart components mount is constructed and there's this minor change that can be made to uh, deal with that issue. In the case of the Pro Astro Gear mount, it turns out that William Optics seems to have made some changes to the way it holds the Red Cat to its mount, and that is causing an interference problem on that end. But in either case, they're fairly minor, easy to fix. They are plastic parts after all, and so can be dealt with if you have to carve out some plastic. But both of the fit up issues were easy to address. I gotta say, my initial use of the Smart Components belt drive system did not go that well. I was able to get it to the focuser to move in one direction, but when I tried to get it to move back the other direction, I just couldn't get it to move. Now, it's probably just user error on my part. I'm sure the system can work. I probably just need to tinker with the belt tension a bit. Since I didn't get repeatable results with it, I didn't want to stick with it since clouds are on the way and so was the Pro Astro Gear mount. So I decided to remove it and start doing some testing with the Pro Astro Gear, which has that sprocket ring gear system. And that went very well. I first did some testing indoors just to make sure that I could see significant movement of the helical focuser in one direction and then back the other direction. And those tests gave me an idea of what the backlash for the focuser system is. And it's actually pretty darn low considering the plastic parts. Testing outdoors was also successful. I was able to get focus with the Batonoff mask. And then after making some adjustments to the parameters I use in my autofocus routine with Nina, I was able to get very consistent results using the Nina autofocus and the first night I took the system out there it worked well and I let Nina take control over it for the rest of the night and everything turned out fine. Since then I've been using it for a number of days. I gotta say I'm very pleased with the Pro Astro Gear focuser mount. I highly recommend it. Okay guys well thanks for hanging in there. Clear skies and I've got a few more nights ahead of me with some Red Cat autofocus. I hope it keeps going as well as it has been. See ya.